How do you weigh evidence for and against God? The answer is pretty simple. The same way you weigh evidence in general. But how do you do that with any precision? Well, science has a pretty helpful mathematical tool here. It's called Bayes' theorem. When faced with two competing hypotheses, this tool is really useful. It's designed specifically to show how much confidence you should have in a hypothesis based on the evidence. I'm going to teach you the basics of Bayes' theorem in this video so that you can apply it to the fine-tuning evidence I'll present later. Let's get started. In his book, Taking Pascal's Wager, Michael Rhoda sets the stage for Bayes' theorem by first going over a few basics of probability theory in general. What do the symbols mean and what kind of probability are we talking about in this context? Starting with the symbols, a capital letter inside parentheses always stands for a proposition. So in this case, A could stand for the proposition, the coin will land heads. The P stands for probability. So putting those together, this expression is to be read as the probability of A. Now say I wanted to consider a conditional probability. We can symbolize it like this. This means the probability of B assuming C is true. Most commonly, it's read as the probability of B given C or the probability of B on C. Now, what kind of probability are we talking about in this context? It's called epistemic probability. By that, I mean the level of confidence it's reasonable to have in a proposition. The epistemic probability of a proposition A, given another proposition B, is a measure of how plausible A is if B is taken as certain. This is important because we want to know how to determine the level of confidence we should have in a hypothesis given or conditioned upon some piece of evidence. Rarely, though, is a piece of evidence decisive in the sense that it guarantees the truth or falsity of some proposition. And that's when epistemic probabilities come into play. So let's analyze a situation where the available evidence supports a hypothesis without guaranteeing it. As we do this, you'll see Bayes' theorem emerge. Suppose I show you two vases and I tell you one of them contains 90 red marbles and 10 blue marbles. The other vase contains 90 blue marbles and 10 red marbles, but I don't tell you which vase is which. I then ask you to select one of the vases at random and draw a marble out of it without looking. After doing that, you open your eyes and see that the marble you picked is red. Which vase did you most likely draw from? Is your gut telling you the one with mostly red marbles? If so, you're right, but notice something. Your evidence, the red marble, doesn't guarantee that conclusion. How confident then should you be that you drew that marble from the vase with mostly red marbles, given your evidence? We can answer that with a bit of math. Let E represent your evidence, the fact you drew a red marble. Let HR stand for the hypothesis that you drew from the vase with mostly red marbles. And let HB stand for the hypothesis that you drew from the vase with mostly blue marbles. How much does E favor HR over HB? First, we have to figure out how much E was to be expected if HR is taken as true. If HR is true, then 90 out of 100 marbles were red. So the epistemic probability of the evidence E, the fact that you drew a red marble, given the truth of HR is 90 out of 100, which is 9 tenths. Symbolically, we would write it like this. Second, figure out how much E was to be expected if HB is taken as true. If HB is true, then 10 out of 100 marbles were red. So the epistemic probability of the evidence E, the fact that you drew a red marble, given the truth of HB, is only 10 out of 100, or 1 tenth. Symbolically, we would write it like this. We're missing something, though, namely our background knowledge. This would include things like the fact that you chose one of two vases at random, you drew a marble without looking, and your hand is not some kind of red ball magnet. All of those factors affect our epistemic probability. So we need to include this information called our background knowledge using the symbol K. This gets us halfway to our answer. 
Remember, the original question was, what's the epistemic probability of the hypothesis that you drew from the vase with mostly red marbles, given your evidence and background knowledge? We can symbolize that like this. This term is called your posterior probability. To find this answer, we can use a famous rule known as Bayes' theorem, which relates the probability of the hypothesis given the evidence to the probability of the evidence given the hypothesis. We've already explored the meaning of these terms, but what about this one? The probability of the hypothesis given our background knowledge alone, apart from the evidence. This is called the prior probability of the hypothesis. To figure this out, what level of confidence should you have in HR, the hypothesis that you drew from the vase with mostly red marbles, before considering the evidence that you chose a red marble? The answer would be one half, because you had two vases to choose from, and you chose one at random. We can now begin to plug the values we already know into Bayes' theorem. We know the prior probability of HR is one half, and we know the epistemic probability of E given HR and K is 9 tenths or 0.9. Now we need to find the probability of E given K. To do that, we have to add together two quantities. The first quantity is the prior probability that you would pick the vase with mostly red marbles multiplied by the probability that you would draw a red marble, supposing you picked the vase with mostly red marbles. The second quantity is the prior probability that you chose the vase with mostly blue marbles, multiplied by the probability that you chose a red marble, supposing you picked the vase with mostly blue marbles in it. Plug in these values and you find that the probability of the evidence given your background knowledge is one half. Plug that answer back into Bayes' theorem, and you find that the posterior probability is 0.9 or 9 tenths. So your intuition was correct. Drawing a red marble gave you reason to think that you probably picked from the vase with mostly red marbles. Now though, we're able to make that hunch much, much more precise. You should have a 90% level of confidence in the hypothesis HR that you drew from the vase with mostly red marbles, given your evidence and background knowledge. Here's the bottom line. When you have competing hypotheses and the evidence doesn't guarantee one hypothesis over the other, Bayes' theorem can help. At this point in Rhoda's argument, we're faced with a similar situation. We have reason to think that a necessary being exists, but there are competing hypotheses about whether this being is personal or not. One hypothesis says this is an intelligent necessary being. The other hypothesis says it's non-intelligent. So what do we do? Well, in the next video, we'll look at the fine-tuning evidence and see which hypothesis has a greater epistemic probability using Bayes' theorem. If you like this video and the content of this channel, then please consider pressing the like button and then click subscribe. I appreciate all of your interest and support, and I'm excited to see this channel continue to grow. See you soon.